changes in group structure, step disposal, control to no control. Now, in a previous lecture, we looked at the situation where the parent disposes of its entire holding in a subsidiary. In this episode, we are going to look at the situation where the parent disposes of a portion of its shares, leading to its losing control by maintaining some amount of shares in the subsidiary. Now, if a parent who holds 95% of the shares of a subsidiary disposes of 55% out of the shares, the parent entity loses control as it now owns 40% in the scenario above which is less than the 50% or more threshold for a subsidiary to exist. Then there will be the need to calculate group profit or loss on the sale, which led to the loss of control. Then the group profit or loss, which is calculated above in the step two, must be recorded in the statement of profit or loss. Consolidation in the statement of profit or loss must be done up onto the point of the disposal. Okay. Let's now move on to Look at the calculation of the group profit or loss on disposal. The working is as follows. So we start with the sales proceeds on the amount disposed of. Then we add the fair value of the remaining shares, which is 40% in the scenario that we looked at. Then we come to subtract the value of the subsidiary, which is sold off. We start with the net asset of the subsidiary at disposal. Then we add the goodwill. Then we come to less non-controlling interest at the date of disposal. Okay. Which will now give us the group profit or loss on disposal. Let's now test our understanding. So Solomon owns 90% of Morgan's before it decided to sell 50% out of it on the 31st December 2020 for $150 million. The non controlling interest at that date was $75 million. The fair value of the remaining 40% is $105 million. The net asset at disposal date was $250 million, while goodwill on acquisition of the original 90% stake was $45 million. We have to calculate the group profit or loss on disposal for Solomon's. So for solution, we'll start with the proceeds of the 50% share, which gave $150 million. We add the fair value of the remaining shares, which is the 40%, which was captured in the question as $105 million. Then we lay the value of the subsidiary sold, starting with the net asset of Morgan's at disposal, which gave $250 million. Then the goodwill also was $45 million. We now list the non-controlling interest at the date of the disposal, which was $75 million. Given the value of the subsidiary to be $220 million, when we find the net, we are going to get a group profit on disposal of $35 million because the sales proceeds and the remaining shares is more than the value of the subsidiary at the date of disposal. Let's test our understanding again. Ritus owns 80% of Kobe's shares. It plans to sell 50% of it on 31st December 2021 for $120 million. The non-controlling interest at that date was $50 million. The fair value of the remaining 30% is $115 million. The net asset at disposal date was $350 million. Goodwill on acquisition on the 80% holding was $25 million. So we have to calculate the group profit or loss on disposal for rates. Again, for solution, we start with the sales process of the 50% stake sold out, which provided $120 million. The fair value of the remaining 30% was given in the question as $115 million. We come to less the value of the subsidiary so starting with the net asset at disposal for $350 million. We now add goodwill $25 million. Less the non-controlling interest value at the date of disposal, which is $50 million. Providing the value of the subsidiary, which a majority of the shares is being sold over rates as $325 million. Now, this is more than the addition of the sales proceeds and the value of the remaining shares. So it's going to lead to a group loss on disposal of $90 million. 